Hi, this is Dave Cabellis. Today I'm going to introduce you to some new Elastic JMS features in WebLogic 12.1.2. I'll talk through the changes and then I'll show you how easy it is to configure cluster JMS in WebLogic 12.1.2. To set some context, WebLogic Server is part of the set of products in Oracle Fusion middleware that form the foundation for cloud infrastructures. We call this group of products the Cloud Application Foundation. As the main application host, WebLogic Server plays a key role in the Cloud Application Foundation products. Likewise, the JMS implementation in WebLogic Server also plays a key role as a primary integration technology among the Fusion middleware components. One of the key value propositions for WebLogic 12C is simplified operations with native cloud management. That is, we're adding more and more capabilities in WebLogic, the base layer for your cloud applications, that enable private and public cloud use cases. For example, dynamic clusters, which enable you to easily roll out and scale out a cluster with minimal configuration. See my video on dynamic clusters if you don't know what they are. The Elastic JMS features that we added in WebLogic 12.1.2 go hand in glove with dynamic clusters. They enable much simpler cluster configuration in general, including much simpler subdeployments. They enable simple, flexible scaling of the messaging infrastructure, and they make any use of JMS possible on dynamic clusters. Without these new features, JMS couldn't run on dynamic clusters. So exactly what changes are we talking about? We're talking about being able to target a JMS server and a WebLogic store at a cluster, and the WebLogic configuration system then figures out what instances of JMS servers and stores to create on which servers in the cluster. JMS is very stateful, so in previous releases we enforced that statefulness through explicit per-server configuration. For example, in a WebLogic cluster, if you wanted to host JMS queues or topics on your clustered servers, you needed to configure an individual JMS server and store for each managed server. It was a very explicit and intentional configuration. And of course, with so many JMS servers to keep track of, subdeployments, that is the targeting of queues and topics to JMS servers, was more complex. Scaling out the cluster was equally challenging. Each new managed server required its own JMS server and store configuration and subdeployments needed to be updated to account for the configuration change. In WebLogic 12.1.2, all of this gets much easier. You configure one JMS server and one WebLogic store and target it at the cluster. Then you configure a subdeployment and point that at the one JMS server. The initial configuration is much simpler, as you can see on the screen. And JMS configuration for cluster scale-out is handled automatically. So as we add server 3, uh, as shown in this picture, the JMS server and the JMS store are automatically added, and your distributed queues and topics are automatically spread across the, the new uh, JMS server instances. So let's walk through the whole process. It's really pretty easy. So I have a dynamic cluster already created. And if we look, we can see I have two servers running. They're both in a running state. So now let's add the messaging. So let's go to JMS servers. We'll create a new, uh, a new JMS server. And we're gonna need a store that's targeted to the same cluster. So we're gonna create a store And we're going to target that to the dynamic cluster that we already have. I'm just going to use the default for the directory. Nothing special here. Um, so now we'll select that store. We'll say next. And we target it at that same dynamic cluster. So now we'll have a JMS server and a dynamic cluster both targeted to the same, uh, to the same dynamic cluster. And if we look Right away, we can see, even though I configured one JMS server, I actually have two JMS servers running, right? So I have uh, that cluster JMS server uh, on server one and cluster JMS server on server two. So this becomes the full name of the JMS server. Now let's, uh, now let's talk about subdeployments. So we can go and we can add a JMS module. So 
say clustered. We'll just take the default for the descriptor file name. The system will create it automatically and it'll put it in the appropriate folder. Um, we're going to target this at the dynamic cluster. This is really just for the things that don't require a sub deployment. Uh, yes, we're going to add resources to this JMS system module. So let's add resources. Uh, so normally you would add a connection factory and, and then uh, other things here. Connection factories are really essential to get you up and running. I'm just going to skip right ahead to the distributed queue. Um, so let's say, okay, I want a distributed queue. We're going to call this cluster distributed queue. Um, so this is so DQ1. This is a uniform distributed destination. We're not going to use a template for this. Um, and then we're going to do some advanced targeting here. We're going to create a new sub deployment. Let's call it cluster JMS server. And then we will target the cluster JMS server. And we finish. And we have a module uh, with a cluster distri distributed queue that is using the cluster JMS server sub deployment. So now if we go here and we go to monitoring, we can see we have two instances, two members of this distributed queue. So now let's, uh, let's show the expansion, uh, the scale out use case here. So I go to clusters, my dynamic cluster. So I had servers, I had two servers. Now let's go to four. Save. Um, let's go to control and we'll start these last two. Give that a second. Um, actually, while that's starting, we should be able to go over to the JMS servers. Again, here's our cluster JMS server. We go to monitoring and there's the third one started. And there's the fourth one. So as those servers started, we created a JMS server on each of those. And now let's let's go look at that uh, at this distributed queue. Again, we go to monitoring, and we'll see we have four members in that distributed queue. So uh, as you can see, it was very simple to roll out that the JMS configuration, uh, and it was very simple to scale it out as well. If you want to learn more, you can download and install WebLogic Server 1212 and try out Elastic JMS on your own. You can also get involved in the WebLogic community through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and other pathways listed here. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching my video.